Okay, welcome to part two, where Retro Combs, that's me, plays the VIC-20 games that come included on the C64 and the VIC-20. This is part two, part two. Uh, part one, we covered Abductor, Andy's Attack, Arcadia, Bewitch, Blitzkrieg, Brainstorm, Catcha, Snatcha, Connect 4, Encounter, Frantic, Frog Chase, and Grid Redder. I am going to attempt to work through the rest of the games today. I've got uh, a little bit of coffee here to get me going. A little caffeine should uh, jolt me through these games. And uh, we will work through them and finish up a look at the VIC-20 games on the VIC-20. Okay, let's press our power button. And remember, if you want to see the other games I mentioned in the intro, check out part one to this video. Link is in the video description below, as well as you can probably find it up here in the upper right-hand corner. Bringing up our the VIC-20. This is, of course, uh, the VIC-20. The software is the same for the C64, although it is different from the C64 Mini, which does not include the VIC-20 games, which is too bad, actually. Uh, remember, uh, we can turn the music on and off. I accidentally left the music on during the last video. We're going to go ahead and turn it off for this one and work our way through. So let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot to get through. So we're going to start with part two. We're going to go to Harvester. This is a Pixel Products. This was a 1982 Reap Your Reward in the Booster Spice Fields game around, around the planet Delta. And here's the game. Um, joystick. Joystick is only giving numbers. So uh, you can see that that's happening. Uh, let's see, does three, it does. So the joystick corresponds with the keys that we could punch in. Looks like what we're doing here is trying to move something. Let me see if I can go up and press enter. Oh, nope, that gives me an eight. So that's not right. So what happens if I hit enter? Um, wow, this is this one I really need some instructions. I am not sure what I am doing here. Hmm. Yeah, not a clue. All right, well, as much fun as that is trying to figure that out, that's our first game, Harvester. Where, and uh, let's see what we have next on the list. Headbangers Heaven. Headbangers Heaven looks like it is uh, a Jeff Mentor game. That's a good thing, usually. Guide Chico the Headbanger safely through a shower of hammers in order to collect money bags. Let's see if we can turn Chico into Mr. Moneybags. Okay, Headbangers Heaven. Uh, okay. Uh, press return to play or I for instructions. Let me get some instructions. Okay, Chico, he is into heavy metal and you help him to bang his head. Boy, this is a 1980s title right up my alley. Bang your head. Uh, he lives in Headbanger Heaven. I think I lived in Hanger Headbanger Heaven in the 80s as well. You make him happy by making him rich. True 80s fashion indulgence. There we go. All right, press any key. And let's give this a shot. Okay, the the uh, joystick is moving him. I'm assuming. Okay, so we don't want the hammers. What we're looking for is uh, there's something there. Let's see. All right, that was good. But then that was bad. Wow, this is hard. So basically, you need to hide behind these walls, but also get the money as it comes your way. Grab the money. Chico wants the money. Uh, where's the man? Uh, reference to a 70 series there, Chico and the Man. Oh, poor Chico. Chico down. Looking, looking, looking good. Yeah, we're not going to play more of that. So that was Headbangers Heaven. All right, the next one we're going to play is something, a little title called Hellgate. Somewhere out near the orbit of Pluto. Planet? Maybe then? Maybe not. Hostile Zaxian? Zai 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 Droids are about to emerge from their planar warp field. Sounds like a bunch of fun. Another Jeff Mentor. A lot of Jeff Mentor titles. Uh, seems like Jeff Mentor got the slots on the carousel for the Vic 20 and the C64. This is 1984. Let's give it a shot and see what we have. Okay. Oh, like that. Uh, Llama Soft. Speaking of Llamasoft, I did hear uh, from a viewer who said that Llamasoft 
is based on Jeff Mentor's Love of Llamas and Raising Llamas. And uh, that was from, I think it was the 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast. What do we have? The Demon of Hellgate. Entry level one. Press fire to begin. Here we go. All right. Prepare to die. I'm sure I will. Okay, this is uh, interesting. You've got vertical, hor horizontal, vertical things you have to control, and this is out of control crazy. However, I do think I could get into this. I feel like I'm just shooting and not really doing anything. Oh, different. Okay, this is one that um, I like. I'm going to have to try this out, uh, spend a little more time with this game. This one looks pretty good. This one was, again, called Hellgate. So that's a, a, a I'd give that a winner on the VIC-20. Let's try Laser Zone. Going into Laser Zone. There we go, Laser Zone, the evil errata and the devilish war fiends of Zyax are attacking all Terran outposts. Jeff Minter again. Let's try and see if we can save the Terran outposts. An awesome game, but they've all been pretty good, Jeff, so I'll give you that one. Press fire to begin. Here we go. Well, this is very similar to the last game we just played, only it's got one vertical and one horizontal, but it's pretty much the same game as, what was it before? Hellgate, so Laser Zone. Um, maybe a little less frantic, a little easier maybe. Definitely easier. Right, let's see if I can get that one out of the way. Oh, I'm not sure if I can shoot those when they get down there. Bro new, bad news, zone one item. Okay. Yeah, once they get down to that bottom level, you are not shooting those. You're done. I like the graphics. These are kind of fun. Oh, thought I had that one. Okay, so that was Laser Zone. The next game that we have is something, a little game called Martians. Martians, once more, it's up to you to save the world by dropping bombs on invading Martians. Special delivery from Mars. Oh, goody, another uranium P-36 explosive space modulator. Isn't that wonderful? In this game, pressing spacebar drops a bomb. Okay, so I guess I don't get to use this. Uh, press R to reverse motion. So it looks like we've got uh, the spacebar and the R to reverse. Oh, these seems like messed up controllers. Hang on, this is going to... Okay, I think I'm ready now. Spacebar and R. Got it. Spacebar. Here we go. Spacebar drops a bomb. Okay, I just dropped a bomb. Reverse goes the opposite direction. Okay, I see what we're doing here now. I think I got to get right perfect on that. There we go. Now we're talking. So I can reverse and go back. All right. These uh, controls are pretty easy. It's an easy game to play. I'm not sure what happens with the leftovers, though. Can I get rid of those? Oh, how am I going to get that one? Oh, it bounce. Oh, it's like uh, it bounces off. So I've got to figure out how to bounce that off a wall to get in there. Let's try one more little round here. Press F7 to continue. Uh, press spacebar. Oh, 
All right, well, you get the gist of the game, so let's go ahead and get out of this one. Okay, so that was Martians by Art Arctic Computing. All right, let's see. The next one on our list is, let's see, Martians Matrix, something called Matrix. Uh, probably not based on the movie The Matrix, but just Matrix. It is 10 years after the infamous Grid Wars. Oh, so is this uh, similar to Grid Runner, maybe? Uh, this is a Jeff Minter game, could be very similar. Uh, the droids have returned, and as one of the few survivors of the Grid Runner squadrons, there we go, you are enlisted into the new Matrix squadron to combat the menace. This should be a lot of fun, because Grid Runner is a blast. Designed and programmed. Select start level. Yeah, we'll start at level one and press fire for start. Here we go. Jeff, Jeff has the best intros. These games are great. So definitely grid runner like. Maybe a little easier just to get started with. Cleared. All right, I like that one. That is a good game right there. Let's go ahead. Uh, since it's so similar to Grid Runners, not spend a lot of time on that one, but that is definitely one I'm going to go back in and play some more. The next one that we have here it is Mega Vault. Help Ursa Minor orphan Fred escape from the evil Dr. Zorkliff's Mega Vault. Ooh, I like that uh, opening screen there. That looks good. It's a kind of shooter adventure feel. Let's see, uh, Fred, you food key. Oh, Fred, you food key, not Fred, you food key. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, press a key. Can I press the button on the joystick? I can. F1 to start. Uh, let's take a look here and see what we have. Looks like we've got some action going up top. I have no clue. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Very small playing field. What I did. Um, I guess I have to get through here. Oh, this is going to be hard. We will not be in this game long. Okay, so I made it through that. Okay, so what I've got to do is get from that top down to the bottom, get a key. We're gonna get we're gonna get a little bit further before I get out of here. Let's try one more here. I know a lot of you are out there going, Stephen, not now, not now. Wait, that's ridiculous. He's dead, Jim. He's dead. He's dead, Captain. He'll die, Jim. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. Dead. The man is dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead, sir. Okay. Well, that's a fun game, isn't it? Let's just get out of that one. That was Mega Vault. Mega Galactic Llamas. Battle at the Edge of Time. Definitely the best title of this whole series of games that's included with EVIC 20. Metal Galactic Llamas. Battle at the Edge of Time. Wow. What do we do? Uh, fight against Zaxian again, or Z Zyaxian, a cyborg arachnid mutants using genetically manipulated meta beasts all right so more llama action let's dive into some llama action llama action um, we can change our levels with our f keys f7 to begin again really digging the keyboard on the vic 20 uh, really nice to have that all right we are at level one we have three llamas these three llamas will not last long Oh, look at me, llama with lasers. What's not to like about llamas and lasers? Uh-oh, what's this guy? Oh, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna have to, when they get on the ground like that, I'm gonna have to shoot them. There you go. Fall into my web of lasers. See, now we, we go. This is a fun game. I like this one. Nicely done on this one, Jeff. Uh oh. I think. 
I like that you can go from one end of the edge of the screen to the other edge. That makes it easier to get away. If you couldn't do that, this would be an impossible game. Uh, so that is, again, the game with the best title, Mega Galactic Llamas Battle at the Edge of Time. Next game that we have is something called Psychedelia. Psychedelia. Let's see if we can find that. Psychedelia. Uh, you cannot win. You cannot lose. Only enjoy. There's no frustration. There's no killing. Only pleasure. So it's basically just a uh, a demonstration. And uh, you put it on in the background with music. Since there's no microphone on the VIC-20 or any way to register audio, I have to assume that there's very little interactivity with the audio that may be playing in the background. So here it is. Psychedelia. This seems like a... Uh, See, so it hit A. If I hit A, it does. A st actually stops the psychedelia demo. A turns it back on. Let's go full screen here so you can see it. And uh, do any of the other keyboard, is there anything else we can do if I hit a 1? Oh, looks like 1 did change the pattern. What if I hit 2? Oh, there we go. We do have different patterns with psychedelia. So this is 1. This is 2. This is three, four, five. Man, I really would love to have this synced up to some audio in the background. That would be a lot of fun. Six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Does it go back beyond zero? Plus, will that do one? Yes, there's one on plus. Minus, one on minus, pound sign. Pound sign even has one. What about clear home? What happens if I hit clear home? Clear home has one. Insert delete actually has one too. Uh, what if I hit Q? Nothing on Q. So it look, looks like W, A. Yeah, so just the top row. Let's see if the backspace. Oh, I hit A. Can't hit A. A stops. The backspace, there is one on the, uh, not backspace, but the arrow left button in the upper left hand corner actually is another one. So all the top row keys give you a different psychedelic pattern. So that is the game or demo called Psychedelia. Turn some background music on here. Next one we're looking for is Snake. Here's Snake. Snake, control your pet snake. He must eat flies and bugs to live and grow, but around his lair are poisonous mushrooms. Snake. Oh no, use the keys or joystick. Whew, good. Eat the flies and beetles. Okay, flies and beetles, but beware of the mushrooms. So flies, beetles, no mushrooms. Hit any key to start. Let's go. Kind of an upgraded centipede snake kind of what what just happened i didn't do anything i do want another go but i'd like to know why i died so quickly did anybody see that leave that in the comments why am i dying this is an impot you were killed by a mushroom this is impossible if the game starts immediately and you lose so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and, and time this as soon as i start just go somewhere here we go here we go Um, this is frustrating. Let's try this one more time. Oh, there we go. I'm finally in. Okay, we want... Okay, you can't hit the edge either. Okay, we're going to try one more time. Give it another go. I give up. Okay, so we're going to exit this game. Okay, now one of the things I did want to show you is uh, I've been playing uh, in a display mode that mimics a CRT. Some of you may or may not know that there are some settings for uh, display settings in here. 
Um, because I've got everything set up just right in OBS, I can go ahead and turn off those scan lines. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and clean that screen up a little bit for you, just so you can see what it looks like without the scan lines when I'm playing the game. Just a little tip kind of thrown in there for somebody who may be new to the C64 or the VIC-20. So that was Snake. Now we're gonna play Star Quest. Let's go up and find something. Just the name right there just makes it sound like I want to play this game. But then I look at that screen and I say, I'm not so sure I want to play this. Okay, let's take a uh, voyage of discovery and adventure in the cosmos. Here we go. Welcome aboard the Starship Star Quest. This is starting to look a little bit like a, another game we played earlier. I am Vic, your onboard computer. Oh, nice graphics. I do like these graphics. Let's go ahead and go full screen so you can take advantage of these graphics here. Ready for hyperspace jump. Go for it. Again, I'm doing nothing at this point. I'm just watching the game. Okay, so use the cursor keys to select a target star. So I can't use a joystick. Oh, the joystick does work. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this star right here. And I'm going to hyperspace with an H. Star lock on. This is pretty nice. I like this. I've got it on a big screen in front of me, uh, and it's just flashing, which is really great. I'm actually uh, displaying all this up on it. The reason I keep looking up is there is a big screen up here, a big HD monitor. And so when that whole flashing was going on, it was just going everywhere. Okay, announcing Starfall. Okay, I've, uh, okay. Uh, star name is Capella, da 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 da, Spectre, color yellow, magnet, magnitude, point two. Press P for planet scan. Let's scan a planet with the letter P. My 14-year-old, 15-year-old inner child would have loved this back in the day because I feel like I'm on a starship right now. Uh, no planet scan, no habitable planet. Press M for mineral scanning. Minerals? This is like a tricorder from Star Trek. This is awesome. Uh, uh, and filed, okay. D for data. Let's see what our data is. Uh, planet three, best scan, closing to orbit. Oh, a little ship cross. I like that. Orbital insertion completed. Press L to land the shuttlecraft. Okay, this is this is kind of fun. If, if you're not into just the quick action games and you just want to kind of dive into a story or pretend, this is really kind of one of those pretend games. Uh, you can pretend that you're in, on the uh, Starship Enterprise at this point and you're getting ready to take a shuttlecraft down to the planet that you have just uh, tricordered uh, and gotten your data and scanned. Here we go. I'm headed down. Use cursor keys to control your descent rate. Hopefully the uh, joystick will work too. So this is like Lunar Lander at this point, I'm assuming. Oh, destroyed? How could I have been destroyed? I had the, I had it. All right, let's go for hyperdrive. Oh, I didn't even select a target star. Okay, well, you can see the flashing of the colors. This is pretty awesome. Hyperdrive. Announcing Starfall. Okay, so that is Star Quest. That one is uh, that one's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna come back to that and play that a little bit more. Kind of a, a strategy adventure game in space. Again, got a great Star Trek feel to it for back in the day. Uh, and uh, really like that one. So that was Star Quest. Let's see. Subspace Striker is next. Subspace Striker. This is another uh, game by Pixel Productions. I think that last one we played was by Pixel Productions. It was. So this is another one. Subspace Striker uh, with the deadly antimat torpedoes. Antimat. I guess that's short for antimatter. You unleash havoc in the Federation space lines. Uh, the, the, the folks at uh, Pixel Productions were obviously influenced by Star Trek. There's no doubt about that. And uh, havoc in the Federation space lines and try to dive back to the safety of subspace fast. Subspace Striker. Again, good graphics by this company. I love it. Looking great. Subspace Striker. Press I for instructions or go straight into the game. Uh, you know me, no I. Let's go straight into the game. All right, here's a real space scan. What are we scanning? 
Meanwhile, Captain Combs needs a cup of coffee. Contact, is that a, what is that? Is that a freighter? Is that a, this is a, oh, it is a freighter. It's a Vega class freighter. Has an ion drive, has pollutants, 45 space, space seals. Space seals, are those like sectors, I assume? Uh, light speed is only 0.8, so it's not light speed capable. Let's surface. Press S to surface. I'm surfacing. Again, much like the last game, I really like this. Okay, now uh, press 1 to fire, 2 to dive. Target gone out of range. Torpedo 2 to dive. I just hit D to dive. I can already tell I should have read the instructions. But, again, this is just so we get a sense of what these games look like. Contact. What do we have? Another freighter? Like we have another freighter. Let's go ahead and surface. Target scan. One to fire. Warning. Crews launching subspace mines. Oh, that's not good. Select subspace dive level. Let's go one. Lateral vector uh, four. Who knows? Oh, this is cool. What do we have here? We're going to see the fruits of my labor in selecting those values, I think. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there was a mine. So that was a subspace mine, and there wasn't anything for it to hit. So, oh, I see. I needed to be a little bit closer. Uh, I wonder how you tell where that would have been or how you made that prediction. Again, I'll have to go back and read the instructions on that one. So that, my friends, is a little game called Subspace Striker. You know, I kind of like it. I'm, a, I'm definitely going to go back in and, and try that one, too. So uh, the next game that we have is Tank Battle. I think we all know what Tank Battle is. This will be no surprise for anybody who's played any 8-bit games. Looks like it might be a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, let's go one, nine. Well, <laughs> I'm going nine for easy. It's been one of those days. Okay, here we go. Um, oh, man, that is noisy. Let me turn this down just a little bit. There we go. Take that down. And let's see. Oh, okay. So this is a, if you go this way, it just moves it, rotates it clockwise or counterclockwise. If you want to move forward, you have to do this. Okay, you got to rotate counterclockwise, move forward, counterclockwise, move forward. There's a little latency. There we go. Okay, and that is Tank Battle. Large screen view of the graphics. Last one is Tracks, and it is another game by Jeff Minter. Capture boxes on the grid by leading a red trace around the squares using your spaceship until the whole grid is red. So I think the goal is to move our spaceship around each grid so that we make them all red, but we have to circle the whole grid and get around before we die. I think that's what we're trying to do. Press fire to see what we have. Okay, so here I am. Oh. So I've got to go back and get that red grid. Let's see if we can sneak down there. You have to be on the red and grab the color, and then you can, uh, so you've got to do one at a time, okay? lost it. If you go back, then you lose it. Jeff, this is a game here. Oh, see? I, I, you can't miss it at all. You have to get a perfect square. Uh, I can't seem to get just one move. I just want to get one square. Come on. There we go. There's one. All right. Can we get another one? No. Nope. See, I missed that one. Not Cursor keys work? They don't. That's not going to be any easier. What about ASD? No. JK? No. You have to use the joystick. Okay, so we get it. So what, what you have to do is you have to fill those squares. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's try one more. There's two, and there we go. Okay, so that is 
a little game called Tracks. And uh, again, it's kind of frustrating because the controls are just off a little bit. The next game we have is something called Wacky Waiters. Wacky Waiters, the life of a waiter sure ain't an easy one. Kind of a platform game here. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, press any key. After press a key, it looks like. Okay. Uh, but the joystick does work. Okay, so what I've got to do is get on that platform right there. Uh, did you see that? Just splat. I like that. So am I on top of the platform or in the platform? That's going to be the... Got to press a key. I don't... Why can't we just press the space button? Or the uh, joystick button. Uh, I'm kind of afraid to just try... Maybe go in it? Oh, it is. It's in it. Oh, went right through it again. Oh, this is the guy wait. There's a guy waving over there. So I guess I got. I have to get to him. Oh, this is okay. Well, there you go. That was a little game called Wacky Waiters, and of course, you were probably want to get from one side to the little guy waving over on the other side. So there, there you go. Our last game is a game called Zor. This is another one of those games by Pixel Productions. Battle of the Robots: Fight for Survival in this action-packed strategy game. Zor, our final Vic 20 game on the Vic 20. The Battle of the Robots. Okay, you are on this remote and barren planet to do battle with a champion of Zor to try to demonstrate Earth's supremacy in robotic wargaming. Zor is about to land on the planet. A lot of landing in these pixel production games. Oh, we've seen we've seen that before. That came uh, directly from their other game. What was that? Star Quest? Zor has landed. So again, very similar to many of the other games by Pixel Productions. What is this? Data. Enemy identified as Mark V Proton Class Battle Robot. Weapons are accurate are more accurate than Earth's, but reactions are so oh, what is that? I assume that's one of the robots. What do I do? What do you think? Press the joystick button. Nothing. Oh, there you go. Sensor. Enemy fire. Set shield. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's do in. Again, I, I really like the graphics and the sound. It's really well done. I'm not sure about the gameplay, but that's probably my fault. Okay, that was our last game for the VIC-20 on the VIC-20. I hope you enjoyed uh, me kind of working through the games. Uh, we have gone through all of them. Uh, we went from Abductor all the way to Zor. Um, not sure if I'll go through the C64 games. I, again, the reason I'm doing the VIC-20 is the VIC-20 was my first computer, so I have kind of a special place in my heart for it, which is why I wanted to do these. Um, so, so overview of the games, there's probably four or five of them that are decent or, and are games that you want to play. Most of the Jeff Mentor stuff is is pretty good. A couple of those pixel production games, uh, I would like to dive in a little bit more because they do have that, again, from their name, their production value that seems really interesting. So I'm going to take a look at those. Uh, but other than that, uh, there's some real stinkers on here as well. I, I can't, you know, things like Connect 4, I can't really recommend at all. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. You get the games that you get. The nice thing about the VIC-20 and the C64 is if you have a USB thumb drive, you can plug that into the side and you can play some other games. So as with most of my videos, there will also be a companion blog post to the part one and part two videos of this video series. So check out stephencombs.com slash the VIC-20-2. If you're wondering what dash one is, just type in dash one and you'll get a chance to see what that is. But as with most of my videos, I do include companion blog posts, include any links you need, also some additional thoughts, probably will include some additional thoughts about some of these games. So be sure and check that out as you should with all of my videos. I did have a question uh, that one of the viewers asked about the USB drive and wondered if you could run uh, VIC-20 games that require a RAM expansion unit. Yes, you can. I think I'm going to Take some time maybe and show you how to do that in a retrocombs fast load video so be on the lookout for that but for now 
Thanks for watching part two of my look at the VIC-20 games on the VIC-20. Remember to hit subscribe and like and comment below. Answer some of the questions I asked throughout the video. And I will see you next time on Retrocombs. Retrocombs out.